from Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. It's the Cube, covering VTUG Winter Warmer 2018, presented by Silicon Angle. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of the VTUG Winter Warmer here in 2018. Happy to welcome to the program, first time guest and first time company on the program, Dilip Advani, who's the Vice President of Marketing at Wheela. Great Thank to you, see Stu. You. Yeah, great to be here. All right, so, so Dilip, uh, first tell us a little bit about your background uh, and, 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 and what, what brought you to Wheela. Yeah, so uh, again, my background has been on the analysis side and the protocol analysis side. I have been in the past focused on the wireless aspects of the business. So I have led uh, teams on product strategies and product marketing uh, in, in, in my past history, right? So. What I have uh, done is, the reason I came to Vila is because of the rich history, right, for all the founders who have great experience on the deep packet inspection and the protocol analysis side, right, and uh, they decided to bring this to the virtualization world, and that's what got me very interested in Vila. Okay, so 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 Wheela itself, uh, I believe you, we've worked with a, a number of the team. Uh, uh, Fluke Networks was that where this was? Yeah, yeah. this was uh, from the original Air Magnet Fluke Networks yeah. team as well, right? So this is the team that actually built the world's first uh, analyzer product, which was NetXray, well, from Synco Networks. Okay, so. great. So tell us the, the why of Wheela. You know, why today? You know, what, what what's different? What what's the the big problem it's helping yeah, us solve? Yeah. So before I talk about what Wheela does, right, and then what role it plays in the industry, right? Uh, I wanted to address one question that people frequently ask us, right? Uh -huh. What does Wheela actually mean, right? Yeah. So, so the joke around the office, right, uh, is that uh, because the founders like to go to Hawaii a lot, <laughs> right? That's why they came up with the Hawaiian name. Yeah. Uh, so it actually means uh, lightning in the cloud in Hawaiian. Right, so, but there's a deeper meaning to that, right? So we actually, br we are the power and the guiding light behind some of the challenges that people have with their cloud environment, right? So what Vila, uh, if you step back and you talk about what Vila as a company does, right? So we're a young and uh, dynamic company based out of Silicon Valley, and what uh, we do is we do application-centric uh, infrastructure monitoring, uh, so we pinpoint the bottlenecks that may exist on your uh, infrastructure, and we also help uh, users on the hybrid cloud uh, workload migration strategy. Yeah, um, I hear application centric, and there's been hardware companies that sometimes use that term, and it's really more infrastructure centric that applications sit on, so maybe t t t tell us a little bit about where, where you sit and what you look at and how much is kind of tied to the application versus the infrastructure. Absolutely, right, so at, at the end of the day, everything goes back to the application, right, or the business service, right, and obviously the business service is running on the infrastructure, right, so, uh, we target the IT operations team, right? We want to make sure that they don't end up being the fall guy or the person or the team to be blamed for anything and everything that goes wrong in the network, right? Sometimes it's it is the infrastructure, but at times it is it, it could be the application itself as well. So that is where Vila plays a role to help in that full stack monitoring to avoid that finger pointing discussion that takes place between the operations team as well as the application teams or any other teams within the organization. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. It, it's interesting, you know, when there's the, the DevOps wave, some people throw out that term no ops, it's like operations is real important. Mm -hmm. I interviewed Solomon Hikes from Docker, and he said the reason we didn't container wasn't to get away from the operator, it was actually to create tools to help the operator, and it enables the developer and the application side, but you know, ops is still pretty critical. Absolutely, absolutely. That's where I think everything ends, right? So 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 that's that's been our focus to make sure that we uh, provide a solution for that particular team so that uh, they can help solve any challenges that you may have in your data center. Okay, uh, need to understand where this lives because you know today customers, uh, especially at an event like this, there's virtualization and there's cloud, and when there's a huge spectrum of what cloud means to customer. Mm -hmm. Some of them, you know, cloud is, I'm a small company, maybe it is mostly public cloud, everybody's doing SaaS, um, most companies have some, you know, and they're on-premises, whatever you want to call that, and heck, there's even the edge stuff is becoming majorly important, but it's the, you know, 
everything, <laughs> whether you call it multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, how do I put that all together? There's lots of challenges there. Mm -hmm. Where do you fit in this overall puzzle? Absolutely, right. So, so in terms of the private cloud, like I mentioned, right, our main goal is to help you solve the performance bottleneck, right, whether it's on the application side or the infrastructure side, and help you solve that problem, right. But what trends we are seeing is uh, a majority of the customers, right, just like the industry in general, is looking towards the hybrid cloud, right? So, or multi-cloud, or whatever you want to call that as, right? So we are seeing a lot of customers uh, move towards that strategy, right? But again, they are struggling with defining that strategy, right? They're struggling with how do you get going on this particular path of taking their applications of the business services, which uh, traditionally have stayed in the private data center and moving into the uh, public cloud as such, right? So that's where we've seen uh, organizations struggle with understanding what their current scenario looks like, what their current applications look like, how they're dependent on each other. Uh, again, documentation, obviously, as you know, is the last thing on IT people's mind, right? Or if they have a document ready, it's, uh, outdated as soon as it's created, right? So so that's where we've seen a lot of organizations struggle with getting that visibility into what exists within their environment as they plan about taking their applications to the hybrid cloud. As okay, such. so Dilpa, I just want to make sure I understand. Things like performance management, do you look at both sides of, the, of a hybrid, both the public and the private, or is it primarily uh, in, the, in the private? Yeah, we look at both sides on the uh, private side as well as the public side, right? And on the private side, like I mentioned, Ed, not only do we help on the performance monitoring there, but we also help you define your product migration strategy. Okay, uh, when, when I think about all those things you were talking about, I'm surprised I haven't heard you know some mention of machine learning, artificial intelligence, because, you know, Things are growing, things are changing sure. so fast, there's no way the administrator can kind of do it themselves. So, mm -hmm. you know, what's the secret sauce? Where's the software? Where do you fit into, you know, or do you just stay away from those buzzwords? No, 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 no. Again, I think everybody likes to use those buzzwords <laughs> and then we we do the same as well, right? So, I think when you think about artificial intelligence or machine learning, at the end of the day, it goes back to the predictive analysis capabilities that organizations must have, right, for their data centers. Because at the end of the day, right, it's about being proactive and not just being reactive to issues that could be occurring on your network, right? So mining the data that's being collected on your current environment and using that, right, via artificial intelligence or machine learning to figure out what are the resources that will be needed, right, as they expand their own capacities within their own uh, environment as such, right? Or being able to predict that they need to assign certain resources or they're going to run into a certain issue if they don't assign certain resources or they don't do something which uh, could impact their business performance. Okay, uh, uh, Dil, want to just step back for a second. Give us uh -huh. snapshot of the company. How many people? You know, what can you share about funding? Um, you know, kind of the state of the product. Is it sure. you know actually GA and that? Yeah, absolutely you know. right. So, like I mentioned, right, we are a young and dynamic company located in Silicon Valley. Right, we were founded uh, three or four years ago. Right, we have a product that's shipping. We have lots of customers, and uh, we, uh, in terms of funding, right, we have gone through series A round of funding and such. Right. Right. And we have customers across uh, different verticals, whether it's healthcare, whether it's retail, and whether it's uh, MSP type of customers as well. Okay, and you're 100% you're a software company. How, how, how do people engage? Is there like a free trial demo type thing, or you know, how, how do people get started? Yeah, so again, we're a pure, software company, right? So if you look at uh, how Wheela gets installed, so we get installed as a guest VM, right? On top of the hypervisor, right? So this could be a hyper-V environment or it could be a VMware type of an environment. And then what we do is we do deep packet inspection to get the application and the network information. Okay. Right. And, and you, so you mentioned VMware and Hyper-V, public clouds, which which ones? Uh, public you? cloud, uh, it's a AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, right? So we are more agnostic on that side, right? Great. Uh, so, uh, so, so we do deep packet inspection to get those details on the application and the network side, and then we also talk to vCenter, right, to uh, get all of the compute and storage statistics. So again, a pure 
software solution. Uh, we do have trials available. We have a 30-day trial available of our software, so in case anybody's interested, they can obviously go to our website at wheeler.com and then request the trial. We work with the customer to install it. We train the person who's doing the trial, and then after the trial, we even do like data reviews and show you what issues that may be existing in your network, right? So like a true performance assessment of your data center. Okay, and, and who's the typical you know, administrator of this? Is this same person using vCenter Admin or doing their public cloud management? And, and, and I'm curious what your dynamics you're seeing in the company when they've got kind of both sides of that and yeah. you know, how that plays. Yeah, so typically like uh, we're seeing virtualization engineers or uh, IT architects who are using the Vila solution, right? And the trend we are seeing between the private and the public cloud is that many of the people who had the responsibility on the private side, it's the same group of people who are still responsible for managing uh, the environment on the public cloud side, right? So it's not only important to make sure the availability of the infrastructure continues as you go from your private to your public cloud, but also the application use and user experience uh, continues, right? So that's why having the same group of people managing and monitoring is, is, is the trend that we are seeing with our customers. Okay, Dilt, Dil, want to give you the final word. You know, what, what bigs Wheela to, to an event like this? Yeah, so uh, again, uh, this is the first time we've come to VTUG. Uh, we have been doing many other community events, right, uh, in other locations, right? So Villa believes in working with the community, right? So that's why we, we've been engaged with the V experts as well as the community in general. And we think this is one of the premier events uh, where the right people in the community in terms of the technical professionals hang out, right? So that's why we decided to come to the VTUG event. Right. And I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure we'll be back for the summer slam as well. Right. Well, Dilip Advani, really appreciate the updates and uh, t telling our audience a little bit about Wheela. It's lightning in the cloud. For some reason, we haven't had the cube yet in Hawaii. Maybe uh -huh. we need to rechange, yeah. give, give, give a name. And with so the water will have my ties there. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> so uh, lots more coverage here at the VTUG Winter Warmer 2018. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE.